Good morning, class. Here's chapter seven, systems of equations and inequalities, section 7.8, determinant and Kramer's rule. All right, so we covered systems of linear equations in two and three variables, nonlinear equations, matrices, uh, Gaussian elimination, and now solving systems of systems of equations with Kramer's rule determinants. The objectives are to evaluate determinant of a two by two matrix, use Kramer's rule to solve a system of two equations containing two variables, evaluate determinant of a three by three matrix, and use Kramer's rule to solve a system of three equations containing three variables. So recall, matrices are classified by their dimensions, the number of rows, rows and columns. A matrix with m rows and n columns has dimension m by n. A square matrix has the same number of rows as columns. The dimension of a square matrix is n by n. A matrix with only zero elements is called a zero matrix. The element of matrix minus A or the additive inverse of the elements of matrix A. Here's an example of a matrix with one and two rows, one, two and three columns. So we call it a two by three matrix. The operation of matrices basically are very similar to uh, operation of numbers. A plus zero is zero plus A equals A. This zero is a zero matrix. A plus minus A is A minus A equal to zero. This is the opposite matrix. A plus B is the same as B plus A. A plus B plus C is A plus B plus C. This is a commutative property. This is the associative property. It works with additions, not with multiplications necessary. Uh, summary of matrix addition and subtraction. If F and if A and B are both M by N matrices, then the sum of A and B, A plus B is a matrix obtained by adding corresponding entries of A and B. The difference of A and B, A minus B, is obtained by subtracting corresponding entry, entries of A and B. The product of a scalar K, meaning a real number, and a matrix A is the matrix Ka, each of whose elements is K times the corresponding elements of A. The product of AB of an M by N matrix A and N by K matrix B is an M by K matrix and is found as follows. To find the ith row jth column element of AB, multiply each element in the ith row of A by the corresponding element in the jth column of B. <clears throat> the sum of these products give the elements of row I, column J of AB. The product AB can be found only if the number of columns of A is the same as the number of column rows of B. The final product will have as many rows as A and as many columns as B. Here's the calculator, uh, some sort of a technology, including TI calculator. To enter matrix, you go to matrix editor. To get to matrix editor, found by pressing second and x to the power of negative one. Use the arrow key to the right to edit the dimensions you want and press enter, put all the entries and press enter. Identity property, uh, an n by n square matrix whose diagonal entries are ones while our other entries are zeros is called the identity matrix of I sub n, that means dimensions n by n. For example, I sub two would be one, zero, zero, one. Notice the main diagonal is one. Every other entry must be zero. If A is an m by n matrix, then I sub m times A equals A, A times I sub n equals A. And if A is an n by n matrix, then n times I sub n equals I sub n times n equals A. The identity matrix it works like the identity element for multiplication um, of uh, numbers. So that's important to uh, remember. Solving systems with Gaussian elimination, matrices and technology. 
Matrix methods enable calculators and computers to efficiently handle and solve large systems of equations, matrix row transformations, efficient implementation of echelon methods. Given a system of equations, A sub one X plus B sub one Y plus C sub one Z equals D one, second and third equations. We can write the rows a sub 1, B sub 1, C sub 1, D sub 1, and the second row, the third row, those are the rows that are the equation. These are the columns. They correspond to X, Y, Z, and this is the constant. This is called an augmented matrix, where each member of the array is called an element or entry. The rows of an augmented matrix can be treated just like the equation of a linear equation. So in essence, this is equivalent to this one. So this part, if you write this matrix is called the coefficient matrix. This one, the last column represents the constant. So we can do the matrix transformation because in essence these two are equivalent so what would be matrix transformation row transformations resulting in a matrix of an equivalent system for an augmented matrix or whatever we do to equations we can do to rows any two rows may be interchanged that means you are interchanging equations the elements of any row may be multiplied by a non-zero real number meaning one equation, both sides, multiplied by anything you want, as long as it's not zero, and that's the key, it can't be zero. Any row may be changed by adding to its elements a multiple of the corresponding elements of another row. The concept of elimination, if you recall, you can multiply an equation by some number and add it to another equation. Matrix methods to solve systems of linear equations, REF, short for row echelon method, apply row transformations to get ones along the diagonal and zeros below the augmented matrix. Or REF, reduced row echelon method, apply row transformation to get ones along the diagonals and zeros both below and above the augmented matrix. All right, now the new stuff. Determinants. A matrix is square provided that the number of rows equals the number of columns. For any square matrix, we can compute its determinant. Suppose that A, B, C, and D are four real numbers. The determinant of a two by two matrix A, B, C, D denoted by, it looks like an absolute value sign, A, B, C, D is the cross product as follows. A, D minus B, C. So take a look. A, D, B, C, their difference is the answer. one easy way to think of it as a cross product or a two by two. All right, so we wanna evaluate the determinant here. You just go with the cross product here, which makes it two times nine minus five times negative four. This is 18, this is positive 20, they add up to 38. We go with the cross section of this two, meaning negative three times negative five, 
minus a times zero. This is zero, this is 15, the result is 15. So if we were to use a TI calculator, how to enter matrix, matrix, matrix editor, matrix, matrix editor found by pressing second x to the power negative. Use the arrow keys, I've done that before. So I'm repeating the same thing. To the right, to edit the dimension you want and press enter. Put all entries using the arrow keys, press enter. So here's a matrix two by two that you've entered. And this is one of the two. In fact, this is part A. Now, the first one is names. The second one is math. The third one is edit. Under math, you have a bunch of one. The very first one is determinant. You write determinant, and then you have to go with the name and put matrix A. If you don't put matrix A, if you put just A in parentheses or brackets, doesn't do the job. Determinant of matrix A, and it gives you the same answer as here. Uh, let's look at quickly one more example. We want the determinant of this matrix. Uh, when we put it in this format, we are asking for the determinant. If we are, we are given this, we're going to say determinant of A or determinant of this, which is now writing it in, in essence, absolute value sign, the product of these two minus three times eight and the product of these two, six times four minus that, and that's negative 48. Minus 24, minus 24. Kramer's rule, uh, Gabriel Kramer, Kramer was a Swiss mathematician that came up with this. Kramer's rule for two equations containing two variables. The solution to the system of equation looks like that. Ax plus by equals s. This is equation number one. Cx plus dy equals t. This is equation number two is given by X is the uh, determinant of ST over BD and the determinant, uh, the determinant A, C, B, D. This is D sub X over D and this is D sub Y over D. I want to explain what they are. First and foremost, what is D? D is called the, the determinant of the coefficient matrix, which is writing this matrix a, B, C, D, getting the, this determinant, which is the product of A, D minus B, C. This must be non-zero, otherwise Kramer's rule fails. And then, so this is D. So what is D sub X? I want you to compare and see, basically you keep the D for D sub X, we replace the first column of D by the solution matrix for D sub X, which is S and T, notice S and T. And we replace the second column of D, here's D, the second column, by the solution matrix for D sub one. So for D sub X, the first column is, of D is changed to that, the solution or the constant. They call it the solution or the constant. For D sub Y, you look at D, and because Y is the second variable, you change the second column to S and T. Take a look. So here's an example. We want to use Kramer's rule to solve the following System 2x plus 4y equals negative 2 minus 5x minus 2y equals 13. And basically, 
when we have a system of equations in two variables, we write the coefficient matrix A, B, C, D, and we want to find the determinant of that. So we want 2, 4, minus 5, minus 2. We want this determinant. That's called the D. So we go with the cross product, 2 times minus 2, minus 4 times negative 5, or negative 5 times 4. This gives us negative 4. This gives us positive 20. They add up to 60. Now, how do we find these subjects? I want to make sure we understand. that. You look at this one, and the next one is D sub X. The first column represents the X, if you will. And the second column represents the Y value. So the first column, since we want X, the first column, we're going to re replace it with the constant on the or the solution called minus 213. And now we evaluate this again, the cross product, that means minus two times minus two, minus the product of 13 and four. This is a positive four, this is negative 52, <clears throat> gives us negative 48. So we did D sub X, there is one more, and that's D sub Y. We go back to the D. The first column is unchanged because we want D sub Y. The second column is changed to this. So replace this two with this two, or D sub Y. Okay. So that's how we make the change. Now, of course, we repeat the determinant two times, 13 minus, negative times times negative two. So this is 26. This would be positive 10, but this makes it negative 10. So the answer is 16. Now, X is DX divided by D. So first understanding the D and D sub X and D sub Y. Now we divide this one by this one to get x, this one by this one to get y. So d sub x minus 48 divided by d, which is 16, results in negative 3. For y, we divide d sub y by that, and that gives us 1. So the pair is negative 3, 1. So the pair is negative 3, 1. You should check. So for example, 2, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 4 times 1 is 4, negative 6 and 4, they add up to negative 2. Negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15, minus 2 times 1 is minus 2, positive 15 minus 2 is 13. So check your work afterwards. For this system, we want to use the Kramer's rule. 5x plus 7y equals negative 1. 6x plus 8y equals 1. So D represents the determinant of the coefficient matrix. So D is the determinant of 5, 7, 6, 8. See, when you use, parentheses, uh, when you use um, matrices, sign, and then symbols, then you have to put D10. Uh, so five times eight minus six times seven. So 
this two minus this two. Uh, 40 minus 42 is negative two. Now, what is d sub x? The first column, five and six, changes to the constant or the solution matrix. Now this two, minus one times eight, minus the product of these two, one times seven. So this is negative eight, this is negative seven, the result is negative 15. What about d sub y? d sub y is the second column that is changed. So this one you keep, this one you change to the constant column. The product, cross product, five times one, minus uh, six times negative one, and we have five plus six is 11. So x is d sub x divided by d, which makes it negative 15 over negative two or 15 halves. y is dy over d, which makes it 11 over negative 2 or minus 11 halves. So the solution is 15 halves comma negative 11 halves, or if you say the solution set, then you use braces and you put those. Uh, so you check, I'm going to check one of them quickly. If I multiply five by 15, I get 75 halves. If I multiply seven by negative 11, I get minus 77 halves. So 75 minus 77 is minus two halves, gives us negative one. We can check the second. So you really have to check to be on the safe side. Uh, you could write, edit and write uh, matrix A, B, this is matrix A, this is matrix B, they don't have the capital D there, okay, and here's matrix C, so you call them A, B, C now, that's fine for the sake of technology. Now, the ratio of determinant of B to A is your X, and the ratio of the determinant of C to determinant of A is your X. So take a look at what we have. Determinant of a B, you have a determinant of A, and then you have it, a, and then you change it to a fraction, that's 15 halves X. Determinant of C to determinant of the A is negative 11 half. So this is using technology. Uh, so, and you can do that pretty fast. What happens when we have a three by three matrix? Determinant of a three by three matrix, the value of a determinant of a three by three matrix may be defined in terms of two by two determinants as follows. So you decide to expand it with respect to one of the columns or rows and it makes no difference. For example, if you decide to uh, expand it with respect to this, then the way it works, you're gonna multiply, this one will go away. And then 
if you're using the first entry, this one goes away, this is left. So for the sake of argument, so you can see if I want to use the first entry, I say a sub one one times the determinant of what is left. So I want you to see just this one. Just look at this one. Now for the next one, A sub one, two, and the determinant of what is left. Take a look. This is what is left. And the last one, A sub one, three, times what is left. What happens to the sign? The very first entry takes a positive sign, then they alternate. I'll discuss this further in a moment, but just remember that the very first one takes a positive sign and then alternate. Even if you go down and you want to expand it with respect to this column. If you want to start with this row and expand it, this one, start with the negative sign and then they alternate. Okay? Now, What are we dealing with here? This is a two by two determinant left after removing row and column containing A11. So you move this row, you move this column. So just this one again, you're left with this. That's what they're referring to. And what is this? A two by two determinant left after removing row and column containing A12. So that's the same row, but the column now this time, this one is moved. What about this one? Two by two determinant left after removing row and column containing A13. Now, the, of course the row was the same row, but the column is this time, this one, and this is what is left. The two by two determinants are called minors of three by three determinants. So this is a minor, this is a minor, this is a minor, which with respect to A11, A12, sometimes they put A11, sometimes they put A1 comma one. I'll show you both makes no difference. And let me erase the mess. Here's the uh, second method. You put the same determinant side by side. So you put two of them and you go down in this manner and you multiply them and add them up. Multiply this three plus multiply this three plus multiply this three. Then you go this way, you add them up you multiply this three, you multiply this three, you multiply this three, you add them up. The sum of the blues minus the sum of the reds or purples, if you want to call it. So determinant of A is, look at the blues, A11, A22, A33, and the next and the next. We add them up. Look at the purples, we add them up. But the blues take a positive sign, this one takes a negative sign. This is the second method. And note, we can choose to expand across any row or column. Now more on this sign as far as the terminology is concerned. Let M sub I J be the minor or element A sub i j in an n by n matrix. The cofactor of A sub i j written by capital A sub i j is capital A i sub i j negative one to the power of i plus j times capital M sub I, J. I want to tell you what that means. So first, um, you remember the determinant of this one, how we got that, okay? And we can write A sub one comma one or just A one one.
I want to explain this concept. This concept refers to the determinant, including the sign. Remember, if I want to expand it with respect with the very first row or even very first column, the very first entry takes a positive sign. I cross them and I have this one, and then they alternate. Take a look at what happens here. We want to expand it with respect to column two. Remember what I said? I said we start with positive, everything else alternate. So you really start with negative. This is minus one. But how do you arrive at it? This is negative one to the power of i plus j. If you look at the first one, a11, one, one, one plus one is two, negative one to the power of two is one. So this is either positive or negative. So when you are here, the sum of these two numbers is even, and negative one to the power of even is positive one plus negative one. When you raise it to the power of even is positive one. When you raise it to the power of odd is negative one. So if you're gonna go with this one, this, has the entry one, two, one plus two makes it three, negative one to the power of three makes it negative. And then two plus two is positive, four even makes this positive. So they alternate, so take a look. This becomes negative, positive, negative. As long as you have one of them, the very first one, you don't have to go with those. So they alternate, okay? Now, notice if we wanna go with this one, Three plus one is four, negative one to the power of four. And then you get rid of this. This is the determinant. A sub three, two, you need this number. They will alternate negative one to the power of three plus two is negative one to the power of five, which makes a negative and so on. So I wanna make sure you understand this is negative sign. This is positive, negative. This starts with positive. By positive, I mean positive one, negative, they will alternate. You don't have to worry about this too much, okay? But you understand, just, just remember this starts, if you go with this one, it starts with a positive one. Then they alternate, okay? Always go with the first or uh, row or column, unless you have uh, a row of zeros that makes life easier, actually, the determinant ends up being zeros, uh, it ends up being a zero. So you can expand it with respect to anything, but as far as this one is concerned, note the sign alternates. By that, I mean these numbers that you see the sign, the one that gives you A sub I J. In other words, this is the minor, including the sign becomes cofactor. As far as the terminologies are concerned, you don't have to worry about it too much. Evaluate the three by three determinant. And again, I'm writing this is the uh, cofactor. If you just remember, if you want to expand it with respect to the first one, this takes a positive sign, you don't have to worry about it. And then they alternate. I can't emphasize this enough. But if you were to write this, we would write for this one, the sign would be negative one to the power of one plus one because this is A11. This is A12. This is A13. So I want to show you that. So this one, negative one to the power of one plus one, and then times this. So let's actually do this. So if you drop this, you have one, it happened to be one, any number, one, and then negative one to the power of one plus one times this determinant. Okay. 
Okay. And again, notice this takes a positive sign, right? So you don't have to write this just all the next one must become negative. So we write plus negative one to the power of i plus j for this one is one plus two. And then we have the two. Let me just so this is a one, two, and we're gonna cross this. So negative one to the power of one plus two times two and times this determinant three, one, two, seven. Three, one, two, seven, negative one to the power of one plus two times two. Please understand again, this is positive, this is negative. Finally, the third one. For the third one, This is A13, which is number one. And this is the determinant. So negative one to the power of one plus three times this number, which happened to be one times this determinant. So negative one to the power of one plus three times this number happened to be one times this determinant. And again, notice this is positive, they alternate. Just remember they all, so you don't have to worry about that. But negative one to the power of i plus j. The reason it's important to have that, if you have a huge matrix, a very large matrix, and you uh, want to expand it with respect to a specific row or column, because that has too many zeros, makes life easier, and you don't have to alternate, you have to figure out the first one, actually. So uh, this is Five times seven, 35 minus six, 29, and we multiply it by one. This is three times seven, 21, two times one, two, and that makes it 19. This is minus two times 19, which makes it minus 38. This is three times six, 18, minus two times five, 10, which makes it eight. This whole thing is just one. So we have one times eight. So we have 29 minus 38 plus eight. And we get negative one. Evaluate the following determinant and we can go with the expansion of any row or column. We can choose to expand across row one. Row two or column two would have been better. I highly recommend you try it at home. Why? Because one entry is zero. That makes it, because zero times anything is zero. So if you go with this row, you have to 
start with the negative, by the way, because they alternate, right? So this positive, this negative. So negative three, and then you get rid of these two. And you have this one, this one, and this one. But then the second one, zero, makes it easier. So in essence, you have only three and four to work with. If you go with this column, you have only negative and negative two because this entry makes the product zero. In any way, so uh, let's start with this. So I'm gonna, if, you are, if I cross this out, what do I have? Five, and it starts with positive times the determinant of this. Five times the determinant of zero, four, negative two, one. Minus, because they're going to alternate. Minus, now minus this number times the determinant of what is left, 3, 4, minus 5, 1. Plus six times the determinant of what is left. And again, that sign that was negative one to the power of i plus j. You don't have to worry about that. Just remember the alternative. If this is positive, this see, start with positive, then we have a negative, and we have a positive. If there were more negative, so just uh, so negative, positive, negative, but they alternate. Uh, and now let's do this. This is uh, zero minus negative eight. This is uh, minus minus negative eight or plus eight, three. A time minus minus twenty plus six times three times negative two, which is minus six times minus zero. So we write it in this fashion. Uh, so uh, this is eight. This is 23. This makes it 40 plus eight times 23. Eight times 23 is 184 minus 36. And when you add them up basically this one and this one gives you four with 184 is 188. I mean this is basic math. Uh, we could do this with technology. We're going to put matrix A, B, whatever. Uh, you have to put the proper uh, size which is three by three. You have to input all those numbers in their proper uh, place. And then just go with the math and determinant of B is 188. Or we can do the second method. I want to quickly show you. Remember what I said? Uh, I remind you that we go with these two arrows, three arrows down. Start from the very first entry, go diagonally down. Okay which makes it five times zero times one plus negative eight times four times negative five plus six times three times times negative two. That's the diagonally blue one. Minus, now we go diagonally, we add them up and subtract from this. So this would be minus five times zero times six plus 
negative two times four times five plus one times three times negative eight. And they, we add all of them and subtract from the blue ones minus those. And it becomes 124 minus negative 64, which makes it 188. So in some instances, people find this method easier if you're doing it by hand. As long as you can do one of them by hand, then the rest of them you can do by technology. And that's the idea. The technology is to speed up the process. But we have to know how to handle it. Now, when it comes to Kramer's rule, we do a similar uh, methodology for a three by three as we've done it for two by two. Kramer's rule for three equations containing three variables for the system of three equations. So D is the determinant of a coefficient matrix. D sub X, these three are replaced with these three. D sub Y, these three are replaced by these three. D sub Z, these three are replaced by those. Okay, so take a look. And X was D sub X divided by D it doesn't change. Y was D, y, D sub Y by divided by D that doesn't change. This was for the two by two. Now we add the Z for D sub Z divided by D for the three by three. You can try this uh, by hand. Ultimately, you do use uh, technology, but let's just quickly uh, uh, write this. So uh, D would be uh, the determinant of a coefficient matrix. So column-wise, it's easier for me to write two, three, one, the Y, I don't have any here. Uh, so, Oh, well, I have it, I'm sorry. Three, seven, negative one. I don't have a Z. So zero, negative four, two. That looked strange. Right? All right, now we have to evaluate this expansion with respect to one of them. So two times the matrix, this one, three times the matrix, three, one minus four, two, and zero times this one. Will result in this answer. Please understand that we are using this column just so we make some changes, everybody. That's why we are using that. So you are exposed to various methods. So when you go with that, the first one doesn't change, okay? In other words, This is the first one, okay. 
and then they will alternate. Notice this three makes a negative sign. This one takes a positive sign. So uh, positive, negative, positive. I want you to see that. So what happens, for example, for three, let me erase and show you. For this one, we get rid of this. So we have three, zero, minus one, two. Notice. Now, for this one, we get this one. Now, I'm not going to take time to go over that. Basically, this determinant is the cross product. 7 times 2 minus negative 1 times negative 1, negative 4. This one is 3 times 2 minus negative 1 times 0, which makes it 0. 3 times negative 4, this is 0. And then you have the answer. Okay. Now, for d sub x, we are going to replace this one with this one. So the very first column of D is changed to a constant or solution matrix. So this becomes four negative three nine, and we're gonna do that. So let me erase. And we're gonna expand with respect to this, so four, Again, the first entry, this one is positive. So cross this out, cross this out. This is what is left. So take a look at this one. Just look at the first one. Four times, cross this out. Oh, let me actually do this. Um, cross this out, cross this out, right? We have this one. Now, if we... Erase this. And now cross this out, you end up with this. If we erase this and cross this out, you end up with this, see nine times this. And now this is again easy. You are going to evaluate it. I'm not gonna uh, waste time on that too much. Let me just do the erasing. So seven times two minus negative one times negative four, we have a four in front. Uh, minus minus three plus three. Three times two, this gives you zero. Plus nine times, three times negative four, this gives you zero. And so you work it out, you end up with uh, too many steps here, just you can write. You should be able to get to the answer from here to here pretty fast, everybody. Since I have them, I'm going to show you, but you really don't have to take that many steps. Now, uh, the uh, next one, we change, we go back to the D, we change this one for Y, D sub Y. We change this one to 4, negative 3, 9. Notice. So this one has been changed. And again, if we expand it with respect to the first one, so this is the one that has been changed, everybody. Okay. But we're going to expand it with respect to the, let's say, first column. Okay. The first row would have been a better choice. Let me uh, erase everything. And again, if you want to go with this and this, you get two times what is left, two times this, okay? And then let me erase Okay, so this was the column and now here's the second entry. First of all, it takes a negative sign and then Look at the uh, what is left, 4092, 4092, and finally,
one times what is left and you evaluate it. So I'm not gonna dwell on evaluation too much because the product of these two minus these two, these two minus these two, these two minus these two, and that should be a fairly easy cross product, okay? And you uh, end up with Tony, okay? Again, seems to me there are too many steps. I just wanted to make sure we are comfortable with this concept of determinant because it's, it may be brand new to some students. Finally, we need to find D sub Z. So D sub Z, you go to the D and you get rid of the third column. So this was it. We got the D, we got the D sub X, we got D sub Y, and now we're going to write D sub Z by changing the third column. So that's uh, pretty straightforward, everybody. And now you want to expand that accordingly. So again, we change the third column, remember that. So if we want to expand it again with respect to this column, uh, getting rid of this will result in this. So two times the determinant of that. We alternate the sign for the second one. That's why we get a negative here. Negative and the number three times what is left. Three, four, negative one, nine. Okay. And then plus this number times whatever is left. So I hope you see it's very straightforward. Now again, I'm gonna assume you have an easy time calculating this two by two determinant by just think about the cross product. Seven times nine minus negative one times negative three, three times nine minus negative one times four, three times negative three minus seven times four. And again, remember the signs alternate here, positive, negative, positive. So you put them together and you end up with negative 10. So, x is d sub x, which is minus 50, divided by d, making it positive 5. y is d sub y divided by d, 20 divided by negative 10 makes it negative two. And finally, z is d sub z, which is negative 10 divided by d, which makes it positive one. And we have the answer as five, negative two, positive one. It's really a good practice to check. So we're gonna put this into the first equation and it checks. We are going to put that into the second equation and that checks. We're gonna put that into the last equation and that checks. So 
So uh, the process may be a tad tedious, but pretty straightforward. And ultimately you can do this by technology, as long as you can show work and you're able to do one of them and you understand every uh, step, then you can always use technology. Uh, we want to use Kramer's rule to solve this system of equations. So the very first thing is to write the D. The D is the determinant of the coefficient matrix. 1, 3, 2, 2, 5, 6, 1, 1, 7. Let's expand it with respect to the first row. So we're going to get rid of this. And we're going to have a 1 times the determinant of that. I'm going to explain the rest of them. But take a look at this one. Even if you don't write this, that's fine. It has to be positive. Then it alternates. But we are adding, remember this is the first A11, one, one. that's why one plus one. This is A12, one, one plus two. This is A13, that's why one plus three. And then we alternate, that's the nature of negative one. And so for the next one, We cross this one and we end up with this one. Three, one, two, seven. For the last one, we cross this one and we end up with this one. I see that it's really not too bad, everybody, but it's a little bit, uh, you know, time consuming. And so you do the math, it's the cross product. So the first one is 35, let me just use it. So this is 35, five times seven, 35 minus six is 29. This one, three times seven, 21 minus two is 19. This is three times six, 18 minus 10 is eight. So we have, one times 29 is 29 minus two times 19 is 38 plus eight. And we get negative one. For D sub X, this first column changes to this constant column. And again, when you want to expand it with respect to this one, for, for example, the first one becomes one times this, and you can figure out the rest. If I, so this is it. And remember the sign, this is positive one, negative, positive, they alternate. I'm just writing those. Here's the second one. Um, if you cross this out, you get this one. If you cross this out, you get this one. Now I'm going to leave it for you to do the math. You end up with two. By now, you should know how to take care of the business here. Now, for D sub Y, we are going to use 
this instead of the second column. And you're going to evaluate the determinant, again expanding with respect to the first row. So you end up with this, right? And again, please understand this is positive, negative, positive, they alternate. I get rid of this, I get this one. If I get rid of this, I get this one. Please understand, they happen to be, all of them, they happen to be one here. So this is one, this is one, this is one. Okay, whereas here it was one, two, one. So we have the one and two and the one, okay. And you do the math, you end up with negative two. Uh, we want to do d sub z. That means this last column is changed. So this, we replace the last column to get d sub z. And if we expand it with respect to this one and cross this one, we get this one. Just look at this one again. Please, you don't have to memorize anything. The first entry takes a positive sign, then they alternate. And look at the numbers, one here, two here, and one here. That's the first row. Now, if I erase this one and this one and go with this one, I get this one. If I erase this one and I go with this one, with this one. And I do the math and I end up with one. So again, do, doing the math, by doing the math class, I mean the cross product, five times one minus three times six, three times one minus three times two, so on and so forth, you can do this. I mean, just for the sake of argument. So this is five, Minus 18 is minus 13. This is 3 minus 6 is minus 3. This is uh, 18 minus 10 is uh, negative. It's 8. 3 times 8 is positive 8. So we have negative 13 minus minus plus three plus eight, they add up to one, okay? So what is X, D sub X, which is two divided by two, which is negative one, makes it, making it negative two. What is Y, D sub Y, which is negative two divided by D, negative two divided by negative one is positive two. And finally, D sub Z divided by D gives us the Z one, divided by negative one gives us negative one, which means here's the set of solutions, negative two, positive two, negative one. We have to put it into the original equations. Just as an example, I do the first one, X plus two Y plus Z equals one, minus two, plus two times two, four, minus two, plus four makes it positive two, with negative one makes it positive one. So I did the first one, you can try the others. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. Be able to do one by hand, and then you can use technology, understand the concept, and you're fine. All right, inconsistent and dependent systems. Kramer's rule with inconsistent or dependent systems. If D is zero, 
the determinant of the coefficient matrix is zero. And at least one of the determinants, d sub x, d sub y, or d sub z, is different from zero, is non-zero. Then the system is inconsistent and the solution set is an empty set. This is phi. which represents an empty set, or you use braces with nothing in it. If D is zero and all of those determinants, D sub X, D sub Y, and D sub Z, all of them are equal to zero, then the system is consistent and dependent so that there are infinitely many solutions. So in short, if D is zero, and at least one of them is not, it's inconsistent. If all of them, D, D sub X, D sub Y, and D sub zero, all of them are zero, that means then, It's a dependent system. That's the meaning of it. So I think it's a pretty straightforward. Now, let's discuss some properties of determinants because it's going to help evaluate them if you're doing by hand. The value of a determinant changes sign if any two rows or any two columns are interchanged. So for example, we've done this before, but this is three times two times minus one times four or two. Now let's change the first row and the second row. So one and two becomes the first row, three, four becomes the second row. Now notice what happens. Now the determinant is one times four, which is four minus two times three, which is minus six. The result is negative two. Because we changed it, it's the same answer, but negative. So it's the opposite of that answer. So if any two rows or columns are interchanged, that's what happens, okay? The sign changes. If all the entries in any row or any column equals zero, the value of the determinant is zero. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. If any rows or columns, because zero times two minus zero times one, the answer is zero. So that's why if any row or column is zero or any row or column has more zeros than the other ones, that's the one that you want to use to expand it with respect to that. That makes it much easier. If any two rows or any two columns of a determinant have corresponding entries that are equal, the value of the determinant is zero. For example, notice these two are identical. Because the two are identical, if you work it out, it becomes zero. So you are going to expand it with respect to this one. You're gonna cross, you're gonna expand it with respect to this one. So if you, Cross this one, you get one times whatever is left. So just look at that one. The rest of them, you get this one. You get this one, right? And what I want you to notice, this is plus, minus, plus. I told you, you have to memorize that uh, um, negative one to the power of one plus uh, um, i plus j. Just remember they alternate. And so when you do the math, so this is um, one, this two times six is, 12, three times five is 15, so that gives you negative three. So this is minus two, minus two. One times six is six, three times four is 12, their difference is minus six. 
this is minus three, one times five, five, minus eight is negative three. And if you add them up negative three, positive 12, negative nine, they result in zero. So when two rows or columns are identical, the determinant becomes zero. So that's also nice to know. Again, speeding up the process, speeding up the process. If any row or any column of a determinant is multiplied by a non-zero number k, the value of the determinant is also changed by a factor of k. So we said this was two, as you recall because three times two minus one times four is two. Now let's multiply this one by some number, for example, k. So this is three k times two, six k minus four k times one minus four k equals two k, so two, because this is multiplied by k, the result is multiplied by k. Again, to speed up the process, if we knew this, we could do this by just looking at this and multiply by k. If the entries of any row or any column of a determinant are multiplied by a non-zero number k, and the result is added to the corresponding entries of another row or column, the value of the determinant remains unchanged. So again, this one, we already know the answer is two. Let's multiply row two by negative two and add it to row one. So if we multiply this one by negative two, let me just write it so you can see what we have. If I multiply this one by negative two, one and two becomes negative two and negative four. Now I'm gonna add negative two to three, I get one. I get negative four to uh, four and I get zero. Okay, and now one times two minus one times zero is two, we get the same result. So again, if the entries of any row or any column of a determinant are multiplied by a non-zero number k and the result is added to the corresponding entries of another row or column, the value of the determinant remains unchanged. 